How is everyone doing today? It is Andrew here for Apple Insider. I love my HomeKit home. Everything I have works very smoothly, but there's one aspect I feel gets very underrepresented and underacknowledged, and that's physical buttons and physical switches. While the automation is great and really where we need to head, right now, especially right now, you're not the only one necessarily using your smart home. Kids, the older generation, or even guests don't have access to it. If you want someone to turn on your lights, they have to have access to Siri or something like a HomePod to make those changes, and it can be frustrating. Or even if you have a spouse that refuses to say, hey Siri, every time she wants to make a change. Of all of the HomeKit buttons that have so far been released, the one that is probably my favorite is the button from Fabaro. There are many nice features, other than the kind of cool retro design, it has a few different things that we haven't seen before. There's tons of color options, eight color options in fact, has acoustic feedback so when you hit it, it'll actually give you a little beep to let you know that it was engaged, and comes in two different versions. This HomeKit version, which is really what we're interested in, and there's also a Z-Wave version that goes from three commands all the way up to six. So depending on your home, there's definite options out there for you. We opted for the white version of the button. Oddly enough, this design fits well in a lot of homes. We definitely have that kind of new farmhouse type style going on that a lot of people like, and this white version fits right in. It also works with a lot of modern homes as well, because it's very sleek and clean. Inside of the box, which definitely seems a bit large for what is actually included inside, has the button, an additional mounting option, which is going to be that foam ring, and then a few different manuals to help you get started. One of those manuals does have a backup HomeKit code, I'm trying to obscure it a little bit, um, but that is kind of a backup. You could keep this for, for references sake, or you could store these HomeKit codes in something like the HomePass app, which is a great way to store all of your backup codes, and it's printed on the back of the button itself. But if you have this mounted somewhere, it could be a lot easier to repair rather than unmounting if you had that code backed up somewhere else. The physical button is pretty much as simple as you'd expect it to be. It literally looks like a button. Especially the red one looks like if you have it on your desk, you can go ahead and launch a missile with it. But it looks as simple as it should be. It's a button. And it actually seems more accessible than the Pop and the Elgato Eve buttons because they just look a little bit more modern and people may not exactly know what to do with them or how they look. To get up and running, you do have to remove the little battery protector first. Just push it down and then twist take the little protector out and put the battery right back in. Of course, you're also going to have to do this when that battery inevitably dies and you'll have to replace it. Now you have a few different options here for the button. You can simply set it down on your table, desk, it can move around, or this little back ring actually is removable and you can use three screws that are not included to attach this onto your desk, your wall, whatever it's going to be, and then put it back in and twist it back into place. Very easy to do, or if you'd prefer not to do that, you want something that's maybe an adhesive, there's an adhesive included in the box. Just remove that little mounting ring, put this into place, and affix it onto whatever surface you may be trying to connect your button to. There are tons of different mounting options here, and you can actually get quite creative with them. To set up the button, we're going to look right now at the Fibaro app, which is just kind of a default place to start because this is a Fibaro product. Fibaro app is a little basic though, so other than just kind of connecting and setting up your button for the first time, I'd really prefer rather to use the Home app or other third-party applications. You can just get more granular in your control and setup of the button. As you walk through the setup process, you go ahead and scan that HomeKit pairing code. It'll let you know what services are going to be exposed to HomeKit, like the actual button itself and the battery percentage of the button. And then you can choose an icon for it, which is really limited just here inside of the Fabaro app. So it's not gonna port over to the Home app or any of the other third party ones. If we scroll through this laundry list of all my HomeKit accessories, you'll see the button here right at the end with that icon that we chose to match the color of our actual button. Here you can see we have three different options, one click, two clicks, or a hold. So three different commands in total that you can assign to the button. So like press it, smash it, hit it, whatever you're gonna do, it's definitely easy and fun to use this control. Inside of the Farbaro app or other third-party applications, you can actually expose another option, which is to enable audio feedback. So if you'd prefer to have it beep at you every time you send a command, you can do that as well. Here you can see it in use and how actually quick it is, even though it does work over Bluetooth. Simply slapping the button turns off the lights and do it once more to turn them back on. Of course, to make it work that simply needs a little bit more experienced programming because out of the gate, one press will turn them on, but it's not going to turn them back off. 
Like the Fabaro app, the actual first party home app from Apple is fairly limited. Here you can see the device, the battery, the fact it's not charging because it's on a battery, and those three different commands. So if we want to set up double press, you can tap on double press, go through my list of accessories or my list of scenes and choose one. Maybe I want a double press to open my blinds and I can choose how much open I want them, maybe around 50% or so, done. But again, so double pressing is going to make my blinds 50% open, but then what? What happens when I want to close them? I'd have to manually do it through Siri or set up another scene to do it with maybe a long hold to actually do that. And it just does not make a lot of sense. It does for certain situations, like maybe bedtime. Maybe I want a long hold to actually turn on my nighttime scene. That works great. But for things that are more or less toggled, like blinds, a garage door, a lock, all of those make a lot more sense to just be able to go back and forth. So here we are in the Eve application, and it has a really nice interface for setting up buttons. So here you can see we actually have two rules applied to that button, and you can see them here in the listed for custom rules. And that's my studio light. So if I press the button, it's going to check if the light is on or off, and then do the opposite. So if the light's on, it's gonna turn it off, hit it again, it's gonna check if the light is off, and it's going to turn it back on. This turns the actual button to more of a toggle switch. I can just press it once to turn on, press it once again to turn it back off. Same thing with whatever else you're gonna control, whether it's your locks, your garage, shades, ceiling fan, any of those work the same way. The other app that I really like is the third-party home application. This is very similar to the Eve app, but it offers you more configurability, more options for setting up those conditional rules for pressing the button. Of course, you can get really creative and set up a bunch of different conditions to do other things depending on how complex you want to get. In my home, I have three different commands set up. A single press will turn on my studio light and another press will turn it off. A double tap on the other hand will go ahead and lock and unlock my front door. So double tapping it unlocks it, double tapping again locks it. When I do a long hold, that will enable my good night scene. My office is right by our stairs that we head up to as we go to bed. So just as I go through my office, I hold down the button for just a couple seconds and it'll immediately put my house into good night mode, locking all the doors, closing the blinds, setting the thermostat and turning on the humidifier. Physical switches make smart homes so much more accessible. Whether it's for different family members or guests, not everything can be automated. And having them use something like the HomePod or things that you, they don't know the names of can definitely make things more confusing. So you can tell them just to hit the button on the wall to turn the lights, definitely makes things easier to do. If you want to pick one up for yourself, you can find the link below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.